A couple of weeks back, I made a video criticizing Samsung for how slow they have been to deliver One UI 7 based on Android 15 to their devices. There have been betas ongoing. They've actually shipped the S25 series of devices with One UI 7 Android 15, which honestly makes the entire situation sting a bit more because you can say, you've already shipped it on these devices. Why can't you ship it on these other devices when... Other uh, OEMs like, I mean, of course, Google, but also, you know, OEMs like OnePlus have delivered uh, Android 15 months ago. What is taking so very long? And then those of us who are running a Galaxy Z Fold 6, we're not even in the beta, which is definitely disappointing. But today, that is changing because you can now join the One UI 7 beta on your Galaxy Z Fold 6. And in this video, I am going to go over not everything that's new. Because as you can see, as I scroll through this article on ShaneCraig.tech, the change log is absolutely colossal. What I'm going to do here instead is just kind of show you a handful, five or six of what I think are the biggest changes in One UI 7. And if you want to see the full list, do check out that link in the description down below. So the first thing I want to do is just show you how to join the beta. It's actually fairly straightforward. If you swipe up on your home screen and you go to the Members app, what you're looking for is this banner at the top of the screen, One UI Beta Program. Go ahead and click on that, and then you can click on Join Now very straightforward process. Give it a couple minutes, go to your system update. It's going to download and install that update. So with that very simple bit out of the way, let's talk about, like I said, my favorite things that are new. And the first one, you can already see it. Some people are going to think this is a minor change. I absolutely love it. I am a sucker for big folders, and we finally do have them here on the Galaxy Z Fold 6. These are the folders that are in question. You can see my cursor now, I do believe. If I long press on one of these folders, you see an option that says shrink. This is what your folders have looked like in the past. The animation being stuttery and slow is not because of the phone. I am actually casting or capturing my screen uh, wirelessly, so just ignore that if you will. If you long press on a folder now, you can click on enlarge and look at that. That's pretty darn handy. Now, once it's enlarged, you can do a couple of things. If you just touch in the folder, it's going to still enlarge it like a normal folder, but you can just click on the actual icon and it's going to fire it up directly. So basically what you're getting here is a much denser grid of icons that are organized by however you want to organize them, whatever categories you want to use. I love this. Another change that I love a lot less, but luckily you can change it, changes to the quick settings and your notifications. Now, if you swipe down on this side, you're going to go straight into your brand new quick settings screen, which I actually think looks quite good. It's customizable. Click on this little pin up here and you can move things around, reorder them. You can do a whole lot with this. How do we get to my notifications though? You're going to swipe down on the left side and it takes you straight into your notifications. If you want to put it back to the way that it used to be, swipe down on that right hand side, click on your pin, go to panel settings and click on together. And I think that, that is probably going to be my preference. So now you swipe down anywhere and you see this screen, you swipe down again and you see this screen. That's how it used to be. And that's how I prefer it. Let's go back to another change that I actually do like. I'm in an app now, full screen, and you may be wondering, Shane, where is that taskbar that the Galaxy Z Fold device is famous for? Well, it is now hidden. If you swipe up from the bottom, just a short swipe, boom, there is your taskbar, just like the Pixel Fold, just like the Oppo Find N5 now as well. It can hide itself, so you're not losing any screen real estate to having that taskbar be there. Now, there is a setting that will allow you to make it be persistent, but if you want it to just sort of float, pop up, and by the way, I think it looks really, really good. It'll just pop up. You can grab your application of choice, drag it onto the screen just like normal, and there you go. You are now in split screen. I like that a lot. Another pretty cool one is AI Select. If you pull your smart sidebar out, you'll see this icon here. Whenever you click on it, it's almost like circle to search, but the difference is it's using AI in a different way. So let's just sort of select our weather widget here. And rather just searching for this, you can set it as a wallpaper. You can fire up sketch to image and draw something on top of it. 
You can pin this image up to the corner so you can then attach it to a message or something else like that later. Copy it, share it, download it, extract the text out of it. And if you're talking about text specifically, if you just click on that, you're going to get the ability to share that text, pin it, or copy it as well. Like I said, it's kind of like Circle to Search, but a little bit different, right? Like it's not quite the same as Circle to Search. It's doing something I think that is a little bit fundamentally different. Since I just highlighted my YouTube music widget, if we set this thing plain and then lock the device, what you're gonna see down here at the bottom is the now bar. This is gonna give you the ability to quickly control your music or basically see any sort of ongoing activity. It could be maps navigation, it could be music playing, it could be a delivery from Grubhub or something like that. It's gonna live right down there at the bottom on your home screen or on your lock screen, I should say. Certain activities like a stopwatch will actually continue up here in your status bar as well. That is part of the now bar system. I think that's pretty useful. I'd love to see it expand out to a whole bunch more applications. Like why is it that if I'm playing something in YouTube music, that was strange. It was almost like it heard my request there for just a moment. Why is it that YouTube music doesn't have something like that popping up there as well that expands out into a thing like that? We need much more compatibility with this, but it's at least a good start. Here's a small thing that I really am like so happy to see. If you swipe up on your home screen, you're going to get to your app drawer. And then from there, you can just keep swiping up or down because the app drawer is now vertical. No longer do you swipe up and then swipe side to side to get through your apps. It's a vertical app drawer. I think you can turn this back to the horizontal app drawer if you're one of those people. But the fact that we have this as an option, I'm so happy about. And then, of course, we have so many other smaller changes that I could spend an hour talking about, but I won't. I'll just quickly point out a couple of things. Have changes to the widgets. Many widgets have a new look to them. Lots of animations have been reworked as well. Your recent screen looks different. It's kind of got, got this nice smooth scrolling thing going on. The camera app, this is a screenshot, has also been reorganized and reworked. When you're on the large screen, you have your lenses over there on the left. I don't remember that's how that was before or not. Maybe it was. But anyways, it's basically the same camera app as what you have on the Galaxy S25 series of devices. We've got improvements to Pro Mode, enhanced zoom controls, freeform collages in the gallery application. We have improvements to video editing in the gallery application. The Files app has a new layout. You have improvements for your calendar app. We can actually drag and drop events from one day to the other, on and on and on. There are just so many changes, so many new things in this update. It's absolutely massive. This is probably one of the biggest updates they've delivered in quite a while. And yes, it is late. They maybe should have gotten this done sooner when other OEMs were able to deliver pretty sizable updates as well. You know, One UI, or sorry, Oxygen OS 15 was a pretty darn big update too, and they delivered it months ago. But this might be a situation of better late than never. We've also seen rumors that One UI 8 might be coming much, much sooner, which makes sense because Android 16 is not that far away. It's already in beta on Pixel devices, so expect a quick turnaround to One UI 8, and hopefully after that, they're sort of caught up and back to a normal cadence. Guys, I want to hear from you, though. If you've installed this beta, what has your experience been? Have you noticed anything that you thought should have been included in this video, a big new feature? Drop it in the comments down below, and do go check out that article I pointed out there on Shane craig.tech for the entire massive change log subscribe guys i'll see you in the next one and until next time stay nerdy my friends